The stakes have never been higher. The competition has never been stronger. 42 drivers, 25 rounds, one will be crowned champion. Competition, commitment, excitement. This is Lionheart. Tune in Wednesday nights on the iRacing Esports Network to watch the cars and stars of Lionheart, the Lionheart IndyCar Series presented by First Medical Equipment. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. An iRacing series schedule tours the virtual globe. The GSRC strives to immerse its viewers in the customs and cuisines unique to each destination. Today, we find ourselves in Australia, where the lazy go-to reference would be Waltzing Matilda or perhaps Vegemite. But with today's racetrack, Mount Panorama, being a street course, referencing a popular snack food produced by a company called Streets, is too coincidental to ignore. Take the reliable taste of vanilla that is points leader Robert Hartley, or the South American pina colada appeal of two-time race winner Colombian Felipe Calderon. The chalk mint McMitt face surprise of points runner-up Mike Dam, and Unicorn, the unique creature that is Sunny Ketchum. And you've got the four available flavors of the popular Australian confectionery known as a Golden Gay Time. From Bathurst, presented by Reekmotec, it's the Advanced Mazda Cup 2019 Winter Season Finale. So find yourself a viewing partner because as the slogan goes, it's hard to have a gay time on your own as all the simulated MX-5 action streams your way on the Global Sim Racing Channel via iRacing Esport Network. Welcome to another GSRC broadcast streaming your way on IESN. Nick Smig joins yours truly, Bill Suzanne, to bring you our word I view. John Crackers Ambrose has directed to these armed with cameras provided by WP. Now, from Australia's gold country rises Mount Panorama, traversing up its southern face across the summit and down its eastern slope is a concrete lined thin ribbon of asphalt that will challenge our drivers today. Nick, tell us a little bit about more about today's racetrack. 
from the Australian Gold Country indeed. Tonight will be no different for the drivers. They're going to have to make one heck of a climb up the mountain all in search of the gold. And the mountain of choice tonight, like you said, is Mount Panorama, home to the Mount Panorama Circuit, located here in scenic Bathurst, New South Wales. A historic venue, if there's ever been one. Mount Panorama's host, he's, it's hosted events uh, starting way back in the 1930s. The track's comprised of 23 challenging turns, such as Hell Corner and Forest's Elbow, and spans 4 miles, or 6.2 kilometers. But almost definitely the most important aspect of Bathurst is the 570-foot elevation change that the track possesses. Some tracks we go to feature hilly sections, this one features a mountain. And the drafting up the mountain is one thing, with these guys, and then if they can make it up, they've got to bring it back down and keep their weight shift sensitive Mazdas underneath them. We have a long race tonight on a long track, and to get a, be to get a better look at that track, let's send you down to the pit straight away for the GSRC lap guide. All right, we've got Richard Losper in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Bathurst. Coming down the front stretch right away, you have one of the most important corners of the track, Hell Corner. It's a simple 90 degree left-hander, and yet because of the long uphill climb after it, it's critical that you have a clean exit. Any driver that comes out of here slow is gonna find themselves gobbled up by the car behind. Not that a good exit makes you totally safe. The draft in these MX-5s will mean your opponent can hold with you and may even try to pass you depending on how feisty they feel. Expect a few overtakes coming up the hill. But finally, we reach the second turn, Griffin's Bend. This is a really deceiving corner that invites you to come in too hot. The wall on the exit approaches you quick and the foolhardy will plow right into it. Then we switch right to set up for the cutting. The curved braking zone makes it tough to maximize, and then the unbelievably steep exit makes your speed coming out of it of the utmost importance. Additionally, wrecks here tend to be more like traffic jams because of how blind it is. By now, we're in the thick of the uphill climb as we come around Quarry. This leads us into the quick series of left-handers that are Frog Hollow, Solomon Park, and eventually McPhillamy Park. Each turn really dares you to get as close to the wall as you can while you try to carry your momentum across the top of the mountain. The crests are going to cause the car to be a little light in places too, so I wouldn't recommend trying to go too wide. Finally, we'll hit a drop in elevation and that starts at Skyline. Cars will only be able to do single file from here until Conrad because it's very thread the needle down into the dipper. The car is going to bottom out there, so be careful with your steering inputs. From there, the series of S's is all about setting up for Forest Elbow. This is another corner that will catch you off guard because you've got a late apex it. Get on the power as soon as you dare, but make sure not to slam it into the outside wall. Like earlier, it's easy for cars to get stacked up and single car accidents can become eight car accidents in a hurry. Now we're on the reverse of the mountain straight. Conrod straight is all about how well you exited forest, so just plant your foot down and try not to get lost in looking at the scenery. Hopefully, you don't have your opponent trying to put you too wide. It is possible to stay side by side into the chase, but it's not ideal. It's a fast right hand flick and then throw out the anchors. Most of the passes today are likely to take place here. The exit is pretty blind as you can see and the crest makes it easy to understeer into the grass. After that, you'll hold right to set up the car for Murray's corner. Once again, it looks like a simple 90 degree left hander just like the first corner, but the curb on the inside can make it tricky to get just right. If you manage to stay off the walls and avoid the chaos that can erupt around the top of the mountain, you finished a lap around Bathurst. And that video lap, as well as everything on this broadcast tonight, is sponsored by Recomotech, high-performance sim racing equipment. Recomotech is the most complete source for all sim racing hardware. They have it all, from starter kits and do-it-yourself plans to professional-level gear and complete motion simulators. They can fabricate adapters, modification kits, and high-end hardware, in addition to carrying a complete line of specialty products from major brands. See it all at Recomotech.com. Okay, now let's see it all when it comes to looking at the points. Now keep in mind that these points take into account the four drop races allowed for in the rules. To put it simply, it's a driver's best seven of 11 results. Now with a 115 point lead and 143 pocket points as insurance, GSRC can project Robert Hartley, the advanced Mazda Cup Strength of Field 2019 winter season champion. Mike Dam would need to collect 258 points and unless the 
aliens attack here and, this, and they invade this session and it boosts the strength of field average to some incredible heights. Well, honestly, look at what we got. <laughs> Not surprised if that doesn't happen. 258 points, though, seems to be an unreachable goal. But wait a minute. Notice the droplets for Gene Finnis, David Patton, and Dries Nice. All zeros, which means they do not have any drop insurance. Their pockets are empty, and any mistake is going to hurt. Who will round out the top five overlay is very much in doubt. And, of course, we'll show you the final results as this for this season when we return, hopefully, for the 2019 spring season that will open in a couple weeks. Let's go ahead. We're always picking up new viewers. For those new viewers, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, race details. Indeed, we are picking up new viewers, and we welcome you tonight to Bathurst. It's a good one to watch if you're new, especially. It's a 45-minute race. It's, there's only been three of these 12 rounds uh, that, that have lasted 45 minutes, normally 25-minute sprint races. But the 45-minute race tonight will mean that even though they have open setups and they can pack fuel, they are going to be requiring a pit stop. There's a 30% fuel limit on these Mazda MX-5s. So they're going to have to come in about halfway through this race and get that pit stop. And uh, as always in this series, it is an official iRacing series, so they have the traditional incident cap of 17 incidents and the official iRacing points. We joke about it all the time whenever we come to Bathurst, though, Nick. It's, it's hard to hit that incident cap here at Bathurst <laughs> because if you're getting that many, your race is usually over. It definitely is. Not too many off-tracks are able to be uh, picked <laughs> up here. There's a lot of walls, though. All right, we got about two minutes left in qualifying, and that's important because lap times here are about two, just a tick over two and a half minutes. Sitting on the pole right now is two-time winner, hailing out of Columbia. It's Felipe Calderon, put in a 233 flat. He's about four-tenths of a second faster than the eventual champion, Robert Hartley, right now, who sits in second. Yeah, we're looking at Hartley. Boy, here he comes down the hill. Boy, these that are, are, go these ahead. are really long lap times, like he said, but at the same time, I mean, so close in time so far uh, at the top of the board. Hartley only holding down second by about a tenth of a second right now over Sonny Kanchin. One little mistake in one of these 23 turns is really going to mess up your whole lap. That onboard camera really really illustrates the steepness as they come down. You almost want to sit back in your chair because you feel gravity's pulling you forward. Looking there at Hartley, who's been dominating this series so far. Sonny Kanchin is here today. He sits in third. Looking at looking at the Australian driver, looking to get a little home cooking. As he works his way through the chase now. That time's going to be able to get those. Coming up to this final left-hander, this is Murray's corner. It's just your basic 90 degree, like you're at an intersection. And that gets you to the start-finish line. Let's see if Kenshin can improve. I don't think so, as he's going to call it. Didn't, oh, he does! He picks up a spot. Yes. Going to go to second, knock off Hartley off the front row. Mike Dam, who's at second in points, is done. He sits fifth in qualifying right now. And I, th I think we're all done here with everything running out. It looks like 18 of the 23 drivers were able to put in a qualifying time. Felipe Calderon and Sonny Ketchin fill up your front row. Robert Hartley and Yasua Jediiwa go row number two. Mike Dam is in the third row. He's going to be flanked by Gene Fittis. In seventh and eighth, it's Travis Wallace and Clifford Evan. Then in row five, it is Adam McLeod, and he's going to be inside of Cameron Bidwell. Next. Starting 11th in points contention today, David Pat David Patton starting in 11th up, uh, to the inside of Paul Gibson in 12th. Atsuchi Maeda and Jordi Fike making up roll 7. Row number 8, going to go to Ivan Garcia and Derek Holland. They're going to be followed by Hinori Kobayashi and Matthew Roca. They're the last of the 18 to get qualifying lap times in. They're followed by five more. Lucas Loyarte, Justin Goulais, uh, Ross Daniels, Andres Bertoni, and Mitchell Peak rounding out your 23 car field tonight. The big name that stuck out to me was seeing David Patton down there in 11th position outside of the top 10. Either he just doesn't like this track or maybe some influx of new talent has him a little farther down where I would expect to see him as he sits uh, on the top five in points right now. The drivers begin to take their grid. Can we take a quick look at the weather as we drive over here, as we pass over, as we wait for cars to get in there? Oh, Nick, a little warm on track at least. It is a little toasty down here in Australia today. 114 degrees on track 
uh, basically, it says partly cloudy, but that would yeah. uh, imply to me that there's no clouds out there right now. That track is beaming hot right now because only a, an air temperature of 76. On that drive over, I see one little cute little cloud floating up there. Kind of looks like a bunny. <laughs> But yeah, it's a warm, it's a, it is a warm Australian sky. All right, you can end those little engines, start to harmonize for the final time this season. You know what to do. Gather up the chickens, take curry on the cows, because the horses are out of the barn. And it is the Colombian Felipe Calderon leading the stampede of drivers down into Hell Corner. Sonny Ketch and Robert Hartley row second and third, back and forth. Yasuo Shereiwa, the bullet train being flanked by Mike Dam. Sonny Kanchin with a very wise start there. He went all the way to the left to cut off Robert Hartley, then came right back to the right into turn one to get that apex, and he's going to be chasing Calderon up the hill. And I believe we might have an attack. Kanchin, nope, he's going to wait as they go through Griffin's Bend, but there is an attack for fourth position. Dam gets on the inside of the bullet train. You got Sira Shiryu is dropping positions. Finnis gets him, as does Travis Wallace. Move Shiryu back into seventh. Up the hill they go. It's quite the climb for these little Mazdas to get up this mountain, but once they do, they are going to be uh, right back down the mountain in a heartbeat. So far, so good as I watch the strength of 23 cars, all single file, working their way up. The caboose is Andres Bertoni back there in 20, well, he's in 22nd position. Mitchell Peak back in 23rd, but everybody nice and clean so far. They reach the summit. And now they start to go down. Bumping and banging. A few offs, but so far everyone's still racing. Calderon is first to Forrest Elbow, the left-hander that sets up the long back straight. Kachin is about seven or eight car lanes behind. Hartley's in striking position if he wants it. If you can get down through the dipper and out of forest elbow perfectly, this whole straightaway here, Conrad straightaway, that's going to be your key to gaining positions easiest, I think, at this race. And we're going to see that now for the first time as we have a little bit of side-by-side -side for fourth. The New Zealand driver, Gene Fittis, is going to move around Mike Dam. He goes back to fifth. Travis Wallace watching on. Up in front, the front three start to pull away. Calderon, Kachin, and Hartley as they go through the chase for the first time. Fit is holding that spot right now, but man, Mike Dam looked really fast through there, and so did Travis Wallace right on his tail. A little bit of a squiggle from Adam McLeod as he loses three spots to Bidwell, Paton, and Gibson. Paton, who started 11th up to 10th right now, wrapped in the top 10. They come across the line for lap number one. Calderon is credited with leading into the left-hander that is held corner, and now the long front straight up the hill. Kanchin is within striking distance. This is a long straightaway. If Kanchin wants it, you can see him coming at you. He's now just a car length back, but I think he's going to wait. I think he knows there's nowhere for him to go. He gets right up onto the back of the Colombian driver, and then he backs off as they go to Griffins for the second run. Kanchin got a really good run up the hill there. Hartley, not so much. I thought Hartley would be able to stick right with him as well, but wasn't quite able to. The real question before us is, will Fittis be able to get to Hartley? That gap, 1.3 seconds. That's between third and fourth. There's a three-car train for the lead and more of a five-car train right behind him, so I wouldn't be too surprised if we see those trains kind of merge throughout this race. That might have been the thinking behind Kanchin as well, that maybe he will wait, but look at this. Kanchin really falling off of Calderon now under attack from Hartley. Ride back looking at Robert. And you can see that dark car in the very back. That is Fittis, the little dot. He's coming. Saw a couple of Mazdas get off track there just a little bit. One of the few places you can get off track, like you mentioned on the previous lap. Everyone trying to push it really hard here just to stay in line. There, there have been a few off tracks. Now we've talked about the guys up front. Let's look at the back half of your top ten. It's Mike Dam in fifth. Travis Wallace, there's Yatsira Shiraiwa, as we look back, riding on board with Wallace, who races and sits back at the bullet train. Clifford Evan is back there in eighth position. 
and behind them we may see a pass as Baton is trying to make the move. He's trying to pick up that spot. He's going to go around Cam and Bidwell. Baton picks up another one. Move Baton up into ninth. And this train ahead of him, that involves Yasuda Shira Iwa. He came off of a, coming off of a second place last week at VIR, the late entry to that race, but did not get a great start today. Started fourth, and he's already back to seventh, and uh, he does have Clifford Eben behind him, but I think they're pretty content staying in line right now. Believe it or not, we have complete lap number two. Called around with a five-car length lead on Hartley. Uh-oh. Oh, David Patan. Out of, and Wallace had trouble coming out of, of Murray's. He spins around right in front of Evan. Yeah, I don't think Wallace had any help there. No. Oh, I hit that curb real hard, though. So he's a former race winner this season. Not going to get one today. All right, up front, maybe uh, catching this is teasing the commentator right now as he's riding on the tail of Calderon in no mood to make a move. But, Nick, we talked about it. Look in fourth position. Look, the New Zealand, well, he's there. He is indeed. He's definitely caught that front train. Now that he's caught them, though, he's got to stick with them. And I'm noticing a little bit of a gap once again. Hartley not getting a great climb up the mountain right now. Kanchin getting a great one, though. So now the question becomes, can Mike the Hamster Dam try to run up onto the back of Fittis? That gap, boy, it's almost, oh, it's over one and a half seconds, 1.7. That's a tall order for Dam. Gene Fittis has two previous podiums this year, but he has not gotten the top step yet. He has, does, has no wins this season. I'm sure he'd love to finish out the season with a W today. Boy, he would like one. Not really home cooking here for the New Zealand driver, but it's it's in the neighborhood. Great, great racing up front as we we're gonna on go on board here with Gene Fittis racing in fourth, looking to the three cars. Hartley, Catchin, and Calderon. A little bit of damage on the left front there. Just a little bit. I think he might have found one of those walls that we were talking about earlier. Just to scrub it just a little bit. Okay, let's drop back quickly to 11th position. This is a Sarah Jordy Fike back here under attack from Adam McLeod. Now, McLeod has already lost two positions. He started in ninth. He's fallen. That's opposite of what Jordy Fike has done. He started in 14th. He's up three spots into 11th. The Sheriff is on patrol. He's going to have to defend hard here, though, because McLeod is there, and I think he's going to be able to step out. I don't... There he goes, down to the inside. As that battle continues... Mike able to hold off. Behind McLeod, it's Atsui Miyida. Let's go back to 14th. This is Derek Holland under attack from Travis Wallace. Wallace trying to make up for that spin. There you see Wallace on the inside, gets the pass made through Hell Corner, gets it woed up, keeps the car on the track, move him up to 14th. Uh, we've seen Travis Wallace work his way through the field before when he's made a mistake early in a race. And one of those races that that happened in was Road Atlanta. Wallace uh, won that race earlier that year. All right, Sonny Ketchin keeps scaring us as he keeps bringing us back as he makes another little attack down into Griffin's Bend. He does not take it, right on the back of the Colombian. Felipe Calderon looking to pick up his third win this season. Catchin only has one. Robert Hartley, your champion to be, back there in third. And then we talked about Gene of Gene Fittis hoping to get his first boy. He would love to get one. He would indeed. Man, I'm telling you, Canchin, now he's going to look to the inside again. This is not a tease. I think he's oh. really going to go for it to the inside. Dives makes it stick. And he should be uh, transferring into the lead position. There is no getting between the ears of Sonny Kanchin. Uh, the pass could have been made so much easier down into Griffin's Bend, but he decides to do it in the toughest place that you can. His four wheels scare the cockatoos from Kintor East to Newman Dew. Racing up there, your leader now. And behind them, when that was happening, Fittis put a lot of pressure on Hartley. Hartley's car actually got really loose going up through the crest of that up to the towards the crest of Mount Panorama and 
Uh, he's able to hold on to third now, but Fittis is right there on his tail. Absolutely. We talked about the gap from, from uh, Fittis back to Dam. 1.7 seconds of holding. Here comes the run from Gene. Does he want it? Nope. We got to know Gene Fittis many seasons ago when he broke in on GSRC broadcast. He picked up the nickname Gene. Must finish Fittis. Always fast, could never get the card to the end. He's left that nickname behind now. Now a consistent finisher. Now looking to pick up a window. Let's look back at eighth position. This is fun. Cameron Bidwell under attack from David Patton. I did not like that qualifying position from him in 11th. Neither did he, as he's trying to get one more spot. Watching everything is Paul Gibson. How about Cameron Bidwell coming out here tonight, making the start in the number 23 car, the lowest I rating in the top split. Doing a great job holding his own up here in the top 10. Good racing going on. You can see them coming at you. Nothing going on up front. They remain in the same order when we were last there. Catching Calderon, Hartley, and Fittis. I'll give you a yell if anyone makes a move. Oh, I love that slow angle shot. You can really see them, how long the straight is and, and the roller coaster like uh, texture of that front straight. There it is. Look at that. As they come over the hill. Whee! Looks like Patan's going to be able to make this pass work. He's going to get around Bidwell there and as they continue to head up the mountain. So they get one more. A little bit of a checkup behind them. That was Jordy Fike and yep. uh, Paul Gibson. I don't know if Fike was apologizing for giving him a little bit of a love tap or was talking to Paul that maybe it broke a little bit early. This is a fun little battle. This is for 10th position. Gibson fight now. Looking at this is Adam McLeod. And now with a run. Here he comes. Travis Wallace. He picks up one around the cloud. You can't see him because he's coming. He's right behind Jordy Fike right now. Wallace is pushing hard. He does not want to lose those positions. Thankfully, it's a 45-minute race for him, so he's going to have a good opportunity to do that. And he's making the most of every lap right now. Boy, you can see Wallace Oof. working left, working right, both sides of the street like a jaywalking mailman. Trying to get around fight, no room as they come down the hill now. Uh, you're right, you can tell he wants it, and I think he's gonna have a good shot at Conrad straight away if he can get through for a Selvo nicely. They race oh, the same fight. order up front. Uh oh. Bike into the wall just a little bit too much after that. Yeah. Boy, that was a that was a solid shot there coming out of Forrest's yeah. elbow. And he lost all of his momentum. He's going to lose a spot to Wallace. He's going to bring Adam McLeod with him. The sheriff's horse is hobbling now. I think the horse can walk it off, though. I think he's going to be able to get back on his feet. Good racing going on back there. You see the orange car of Fike, the last one in line. Up front, the four leaders come across the finish line one more time. It is Kanchen, Calderon, Hartley, and Fittis. I think they're all veterans. I think they all know that neither one of them is going anywhere. Let's just stay here and... Might be a case of maybe saving a little fuel. We look at Hartley. We're looking ahead. If you can look behind, you can see right almost sitting in his lap is Gene Fittis. There he is. He backs off, giving plenty of room for braking as they go through Griffin's Bend. Those four cars, no detail. You mentioned those four cars, pretty veteran. Yeah, I'd say so. They have seven wins combined and 14 podiums just for this year. Going back to this fun battle for 10th here. This is Baton with Bidwell. They have left Jordy Fike behind. Fike Fight is long gone now. He's, he's lost positions to... Lots of guys. Look at Wallace working, though. Wallace in that gray car. Unless that's my rods and cones not seeing colors. I was about to say, I think the guy we're going to want to watch out for here in this battle is Travis Wallace sitting in that third position there. He's made, made his way up into the second position of this yeah. group. He had that early spin that we saw. He didn't pick up any damage. Now he's working on the back of Bidwell. Don't need to go there, but I can report that Yatsura Shiraiwa, the bullet train, has worked his way around Mike Dam. Mike Dam is back into sixth now.
And we'll go back and look at Fittis and Hartley. Hey, the New Zealand has picked up a spot. He got around Bob the Hartley now in fourth position. We're going to go take a look at this one. Hartley got a little bit sideways coming down through the dipper, and I've been noticing the last couple of laps, Hartley's car not handling amazingly coming down the hill. Yeah, we think maybe, I think, oh, he got in listen the wall, to it, you know. yeah. You can hear him get in the wall. We'll take one more look at it, nothing going on up there. It is still fittest, racing in third. We'll look at it one more time, give it a listen. Come back to Hartley. Hartley able to hang in there though, maybe doing the benefit of the toe, sticking right behind Fittis. Hey, Calderon back up in front. Looks like Catchin has given that spot back. A lot of action going on. We don't mean to jump you around so much, but we want to see it. Eighth position, Travis Wallace has worked his way through everybody. Bidwell, Paton, McLeod, Gibson now. We haven't heard much from Paul. couple of early pitters here. Ross Daniels is one of them, but this battle on track right now, they got to be careful because they've been pushing it real hard, and there's another four-car train right behind them. That's being led by Andres Bertoni right now. Looking at them, they're coming at you. Driver back in 12th position. His parents must be guitar players named Paul Gibson. Just... Great racing going on as we see. We continue to watch this battle. Uh oh, Calderon has had a problem. Oh, no. And it wasn't his own making. Well, oh. he got a little help. Yeah, this, is, this has been a spot of contention a lot of this race. Right up here at the top of the mountain, we've seen Kanchen push it pretty hard there before. And Calderon also uh, defending there. Man, Finnis barely got through there, making no contact. Boy, that is a tough one to call here. As, a, as a, it's just an ever so slight of tap, but it was enough to move the Colombian sideways, and he wasn't able to save it. Let's watch it one more time. Finnis in the, I'm going to say, maroon colored car, the car in second. Calderon. Now you'll see Finnis make the dive. He gets a little bit to the inside. The, on view right, I'm sorry, it's Canchin. There you go. You see him get to the inside. Camera right. They make contact. Calderon does his very best to save it. Noses it into the wall. We've seen these cars all season long, how weight shift sensitive they are. And like you said, just a very slight tap there from Kanchen was enough to unsettle Calderon's car. And I honestly expected more incidents uh, coming down the hill right now, not instead of just being at the top or at one of the you know more normal parts of the track. But... Just a little bit of contact there, enough to send Calderon around. So Calderon's misfortune, though, ends up being good fortune for drivers like Yatsura Shiraiwa and Mike Dam now, who have caught back up to the leaders. As they all had to whoa and check up there to get out of the way of Calderon so they didn't collect them. So now what was once a four-car battle has turned into a five-car battle, but some of the names are different. It includes Shiraiwa and Dam now. And remember, Shira Iwa was actually caught in traffic. He had an awful start away from fourth to, I believe, eighth it was. And uh, so to, for him to find himself back up here in fourth, I'm sure he loves that. Absolutely. I think we only have one legitimate pit stop so far. Ross Daniels, he brought it back out, racing in 20th. Probably good to go from here with 26. I think he's just did his stop early. Yeah, I think you should be able to. I don't expect to see the leaders in any time soon right now. I think they're enjoying sitting out there right now, but uh, oh, look at Fittis. Fittis. You know what? He saw how to make the pass through this section. He can he can learn from Catchin. He could make the same move that on Catchin that Catchin made on uh, Calderon. What could Sonny say? Just thinking. No 
don't need to go there. Report that Mitchell Peak has had an issue. His day is done as he put it in the wall. That's a good run out of Forest Elbow for Fittis. Is it going to be enough to? Is it going to be enough slipstream here to get around Kanchen? Kanchen sees that good run. He's going to go down right to the middle of the track. Great defensive line from the number two of Kanchen. But Fittis is going to go all the way down to the grass. Kanchen tried to make the car as wide as he could, but he couldn't yeah. block both sides of the track. The two run, Gene Fittis is going to get there. Heading through the chase. Great series and of now to the left tension. Yeah. Kanchen, Kanchen moves to the far oh. right to get a. You know what? This is great. Fittis says, you know what? I've seen what happens when I'm in front of Sonny Catch, and I'll just come in and make my pit stop. Hartley says, good idea, I will follow you. Let's leave Catch out there to race by himself. Sure, Iwa stays out, as does Dam. And a great response there from Robert Hartley to come in, because that was, I mean, a last-second decision yeah. for him as well. Oh, and yeah. Honest, and honestly, uh, Nick, having hardly come in with Fittis was probably the best thing for Gene. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, he would have been left. He, he has a partner now. And a pretty fast partner, the way of Robert Hartley. Hartley is away. Fittis, you got to get going here. He's going to lose him. I think he will. And they're actually being split right now by that's Roka and Kobayashi sitting 17th and 18th. The stop for Hartley, 15 seconds. The stop for Fittis, 19 and a half. Oh. Well, either Hartley didn't take enough fuel or, or Fittis needs to pay his pit crew more. Let's go ahead and look at the second position here. Now, this is Shiraiwa and Mike Dam. These guys have been nose to tail. Not in this order, but they've been racing together the whole race. Yeah, they started fourth and fifth, up to second and third now after those pit stops. And, and Shira Ewa has a little bit of damage in the front of that car. Let's go to Jordy Fike real quick. This is a brutal one. If we can find, he got in a, picked up an incident with Andres Bertoni, who was like coming off of an incident himself. I think Bertoni had a hardware issue. I think he yeah. dove off the track, tried to do his best to get out of the way, and he came back on, and wrong place, wrong time for Jordy Fike. I think you're right. There it is. Bertoni was trying to stay out of the way. The car just wouldn't stop, and it just bounced there. And then there were more involved after that. That was Derek Holland, the other car you saw come through there blink out. That was the one that... T-boned uh, uh, Fike. And Bertoni confirming to other teams that that was indeed a hardware issue that he suffered. Yeah. Okay, so we come back live. Now, did Fittis come in? And we're going to look at Fike right now, who's who's just trying to limp that wounded Mike car. Mike Dam's up. in the pits. All right, so Dam is in. Shira Iwa stays out. Let's go ahead and pick up Hartley if we can. Where are you, Robert? There we go. We got him. Heading now down into uh, Maurice. Well, we're trying to see how will this compare in relationship with Dam. Dam Siddons there. Hartley's going by. Dam is rolling. Hartley's going to get him. Will Fittis. Fittis comes right out alongside of Dam, though. Dam stops 16.8, kind of right in between the stop of Hartley and Fittis. I don't think Hartley wanted to see, uh, I think Hartley wanted to pass Mike Dam there, of course, but I don't think Mike Dam, or I don't think he wanted Mike Dam to come out uh, nearly as close to Fittis as he did, because not going to play out uh, to the advantage of Hartley. I have no clue about pit stop times. I see times as short as 14.3 seconds by David Paton and as long as 19 by Gene Finn. So I got no clue. Let's assume they all know what they're doing. 
My assumption would be we've, we've seen so many of these guys push it hard and we have all these walls around here. I, I would assume we, every, every driver's got a little bit of optional repairs. Let's look at ninth. This is Hironi Kobayashi in a battle with Gene Fittis. Now this is a bit of a faux battle. Fittis is already pitied. Kobayashi has not. Gene can't wait too long to get around him here. He's got places to go. Boy, and he is Fittis has, has really distanced himself from Dan. He has indeed. In this battle you're talking about here with Kobayashi and Fittis, such a hard thing for drivers because like you said, Fittis knows Kobayashi has to pit, and he's just praying he does it on this lap because the last thing Fittis wants right now is another lap being held up. He's pushing it real hard, almost on the outside there. This is Max Roca. Now, this is a battle for eighth position. Oh, my goodness. Is the New Zealand driver going to try to put the toothpaste in the jar? No, he's going to wait. Roca side by side with Kobayashi right now. I don't think this is going to get sorted out. Fittis cannot wait. He'll sort it out for him. They go around Roca. He's, he's doing everything he can to get by them as soon as possible into the chase. I think he's going to have him here. I think Kobayashi sees and not going to push the issue. How about some great under-breaking driving there from Fittis? Yeah. And Mike Dam's Mike Dam now as well. Yeah. Kobayashi pulls off a little too late for Fittis. Catching. Stays out. Look how close that brought Mike Dam up to Fittis. We were talking about how much Fittis had distanced himself. Well, they're right back together for the most part. Absolutely. The one to watch is Robert Hartley back in seventh. His pit stop was so quick. And you know, so much of this, remember Hartley was up in front. He backed out and, and went to the back of the train. Maybe saving fuel. Maybe he thought he saved enough. Catching has not been the case. He's been leading most of this, burning up more fuel. You're looking at Hartley, who races in seventh. The leader of all the cars who have pitted. The six who have yet to come in. Catches, Shiraiwa, Evan, McLeod, Mieta, and of course, Felipe Calderon, who's up to sixth. Yeah, Calderon actually four seconds ahead of Hartley right now, but like you just said, Philippe Calderon still has the pit. Yeah, Calderon is good, but the competition a little too steep to be able to nose the car into the wall and still be able to make up, even though he has 45 minutes of racing to go. Well, let me correct myself. 45 minutes of racing altogether, only 17 here to get it done. Shira Iwa finds a little bit of the outside of Forest Elbow. No big deal. Got to think it's pit stop time for, for Kanchen and Shira Iwa. I would think we'd be seeing all these guys coming in this time. But I swear Sonny listens to the broadcast while he races. And if I say <laughs> something, he intentionally doesn't do it just to make me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to force him to run out of fuel. Make your pit stop now. Now yeah, see, he heard me. He's staying out. <laughs> Just to spite soup. Evan decides to come in from third. Okay. Calderon in fifth is able to work his way around Mieta. McLeod comes in from fourth. You know, it looks like Calderon, Calderon brings it in. in. Yep, Calderon and Maeda are coming in. So basically, that that's everybody other than the two guys up in front, Kachin and Shira Iwa. Who well, I'm hoping run out of fuel just because I told them to pit, and they didn't listen to me. Hartley going by the start-finish line now in turn one right now. We'll pass those in the pits uh, as we expected pretty easily. So does Fittis. And damn. And with the cycle of pit stops, no cars, no more in between uh, Fittis, Dam, and uh, or no cars in between Fittis and Dam and Hartley right now. Right. So they have a straight shot. They can they can see him. They can chase him down here. And they are going to be working together as well. Yeah, the good news for Fittis, he's got his buddy and Dam there. They can try to run down Hartley. Mm -hmm. He's got a three second lead. Kanchen two seconds up on Shira Iwa. Kanchen working his way. 
up the hill. 18 cars still on the lead lap. Not sure how long that's going to be as Derek Holland is in the pits right now, still scored on the lead lap. Not sure if that's going to stay there. All right. He's in Australia. This racetrack's in Australia. But it's a big country. I don't know how close he is to this racetrack, but Sonny Ketchum, feeling comfortable. Just under 15 minutes to go. The bogey time between Ketchum and uh, Hartley, you may want to know, 29 seconds and change. That's going to be... That's going to be rough. I'm not sure if that's doable. Yeah, I'm looking at be cone to cone sure. times, yeah. Oh, looks like Kanchin's going to come in finally this time, followed by Yasuda Shira Iwa. He's also going to be coming in. All right, so let's take a look at Hartley coming down now. Hartley just getting to the chase. Based on the numbers that I'm looking at, what I'm seeing is time cone to cone. I think Hartley's going to get him, but... I'm wrong as much as I'm right, so what do I know? Let's see. Kanchin just Can now stopping. Hartley. Through the through Murray Corners now. Kanchin changing just two tires. Here comes Hartley. Kanchin is rolling. Hartley has a full steam of momentum. Kanchin's going to get out first once again. Don't listen to me when it comes to how pit stops work. Hartley's got the momentum. He might be able to chase him down and get a little bit of tow here up the mountain. Gap 2.3 right now. So he yeah. kept booting up in his chair. Using his Flintstone feet trying to get that little Mazda engine up to full song. It's down to two. Under two. And take a look at where Shira Iwa came out too. Right yeah. in between Fittis and Dam. They both go by him now. Let's get a replay of that if we can. Just a few seconds ago, this is Fittis and Dam. Shira Iwa got out on the track first. You look at Shira Iwa in that white and blue car. He was out in front of these guys, but he wasn't. By the time they got to uh, Griffin Bend, he was behind them both. This is just not getting the car. This is getting the momentum up. I thought Shira Iwa might try to squeeze in there in between him there in that turn, but I think he thought better of it. Let Mike Dam go through as well. So that's everybody as we see the pass made there. We come back on. Right on board with the bullet train, now in fifth position. Let's run down your top five, and then I'm going to turn it over to Nick to give our trip and trees back marker shout out. Your top five, Sonny Ketchin up by two seconds on Robert Hartley. Hartley's got about three and a half seconds back to Gene Fittis. Fittis in a battle being chased by Mike Dam. And then you just saw it earlier, Yatsua Shira Iwa in the mix too, rounding out your top five. All right, Nick, take it away. All right, well, Soup, we have uh, six cars right now either in the pits or they've already taken it in the garage and they're loading up the hauler as we speak. So that will leave 17 lead lap cars out on the venue right now. That's going to be starting in the back with Jordy Fike in the 8 car. The Sheriff, he's back in 17th, as I just said. And he, after starting 14th, uh, pretty good to be on the lead lap after going completely airborne just a handful of laps ago. So uh, despite that happening, solid recovery for him to not be out of the race. Just a few, uh, well, more than a few seconds ahead of him is going to be Hironori Kobayashi in the 12. He started 17th, and he's up to 16th. He's had a pretty quiet day. Might have run into a little bit of trouble, but uh, nonetheless holding down the fort back there. Ahead of him, it's a name that we haven't talked about too much, and he was our first pitter. He was, I believe, dead last at the time, but that pit stop strategy has uh, played out to his advantage because he went from 21st to 15th. Ross Daniels in the 15 car, sitting in the top 15 right now. In front of him, it's going to be Paul Gibson, I believe, in the 20 car. He went from 12th to 14th, so not uh, an amazing run for him, but nonetheless made the show in top split, so... Uh, definitely a talented sim racer there. 
Matthew Roca, it seems as, is he, did he just come out of the pits or is he having problems? Because he is falling back uh, to 15th right now. Made a stop, he should be good to go, but yeah, he's having some issues, isn't he? Yeah, let's add Matthew Roca to that uh, back marker shout out. He's actually going to be in 15th now in front of Kobayashi. Daniels gets around him for 14th there. That'll do it for our Trip and Dries back marker shout out. Fun to give a little love to all the guys who were out there racing. Up front, it is still, they race in the same order as we saw before. I can report though that Shira Iwa has been able to work his way around Mike Dam. Dam back into fifth now. This is a nice little battle between Fittis and Shira Iwa and Dam. One of several that are going on out there right now. Another good one to watch when we get a chance. Let's go there now, director. Let's go to seven. This is Travis Wallace, Adam McLeod, and David Patton. Now, Patton and McLeod, I'm a, Patton and Wallace are big names we've seen a lot race up front. Not so much from McLeod. He's doing a good job racing with these guys. Wallace, your road Atlanta winner from earlier this year. He started seventh, fell way back uh, early with the incident, back up to seventh. Now, what a fight it's been for him. We can stay on this one a while. This is our best battle on the track right now. Continue to watch those guys. I can report that Shira Iwa now. <laughs> Just what I said, never mind. He's worked his way up into third around Fittis. We Maybe we better go up there, director. Sorry to jump you around so much, viewers, but this is a good one. Yeah, Shira great run there. Yeah, these guys are actually fighting for position. When they get an opportunity to pass, they really do go for it. So let's stay on this one. They're going to work their way through Murray and then through Hell, and then as they work their way towards the Griffin's Bend down that long front straight, I think we're going to see something happen. About eight and a half minutes of racing to go. That's Shira Iwa out in front in the... In the white and blue car, he's got some serious damage to the left side hood. You can to the right side of his hood. Gene Fittis, his car isn't pristine anymore. Mike Dam, eh, not too worse for wear. A little bit going on there. They work their way around the. Oh, that's Fittis. I thought it was a back marker. Gene just way off the pace. Yeah, Fittis, I thought was going to look for a pass around Shira Iwa there, but. Uh... Let him go around there. Yeah, so just kind of pulled over and said, go for a, maybe a fuel issue. All right, now this is the battle we talked about back here in 10th position. Side by side, this is hey, Felipe Calderon into the top 10, working around Cameron Bidwell. Good luck, Cameron. Stand with the uh, Colombian salsa there. He's got places to go. Two newcomers to the series, relatively newcomers, I'd say. Bidwell coming out of the second split tonight in the 23 car, and Calderon, we're still scratching our heads as to where he came out of to uh, show up in this series. Yeah, absolutely. He's got about 3.3 seconds to get up to this battle for a seventh position between McLeod, Wallace, and Paton. He's got just under seven minutes to do it. That's a tall order, but we'll see if he can do it. We've seen him race pretty quick. He was your pole sitter, after all. Lots to look at. The battle for third, not so tight right now. Shira Iwa, Dam, and Finnis separated each by about seven or eight car lanes. Hartley able to make up no ground at all on Kanchen. For those of you interested in pit stop times, if you think it means anything, who was our fastest in the box? Sunny Catchin, 13.7. They call me Chicken Little because I say that the sky is falling, but I don't understand how Sunny can get there on a stop that fast, but we'll see. Shira Iwa was under quite a bit of pressure the last several turns, actually, by Mike really looking for that third place position right now. Yeah. Here we go. This is this is Shira Iwa. Dam's got a good run on him. Look for Dam to move over to his right. He does. He gets to the tail. He's alongside. 
It's now Cialis bathtubs down into Griffin's Bend, but Dam has the momentum. Oh, a little bit of a tap. Shira Eo really making Dam work for it, but Dam gets it done. Watching I'm a little everything. Surprised. I'm a little surprised we didn't see Fittis pull out of the line as well when Dam pulled out of, uh, out of line. Fittis, uh, very content sitting back there in fifth right now. Yeah, not sure what's going on with the New Zealand driver back there. We saw him get out of the way and he let drivers go by. Might be a fuel issue, might be trying to save, wait till the very end, five minutes of racing to go. He had a fairly long stop. Let's go to seventh position real quick. This is a fun one. This is McLeod under attack from Ooh. Wallace. David Patan in the popcorn position watching it. 2.4 seconds back is Calderon. He's trying to come. Wallace continuing his charge forward right here. Oh, and he is looking at McLeod right now. This is fun racing all over the track. Trying to set this pass up perfectly. I think he looked to the inside of there, but oh, passes up here are so risky to make. But we are getting down to the end of this thing and the end of the season as well. I think Wallace might try to make one of those passes if he has to. We can stay on this one. This is the best battle right now. I got my eye on uh, the battle between Dam, Shira, Iwa, and Fittis, but they seem pretty tame right now. Shira, Iwa does have a little bit of momentum, and I expect him probably to get the pass made going into the chase, but he doesn't force the issue. They'll wait till the last lap. Three minutes and 44 seconds to go. Our leader is just getting to Murray's right now. I think it's going to be this and one more. Wallace got a great run there. Boy, Wallace did not force the issue. The, the red and blue car back there is David Paton watching out. The gap to Felipe Calderon now under a second. <laughs> the Colombian is coming. Oh, let's look on this boy. Wallace tried to take a peek on McLeod. I thought McLeod might be pulling over there for a second, but no, absolutely not. Adam gets right back in the line, and he's going to take or keep that position. I got one eye on this battle, keeping one eye on the uh, Dam, Shira, Iwa, and Fittis battle. That one much more tame than what we're watching right here. This one's more fun, the one that our director has the camera on. We'll see what kind of run Wallace can get up the mountain. He got a great one coming down it. Yeah, boys, you better be careful because Calderon's coming. Oh, he'll be there with plenty of time. Calderon will get all three of these before this race is over. And to be honest, I think what Wallace is doing right now, I think he's realized this is the, you know, his, his charge forward. This is where it's going to end. This is the last position yeah. he's going to get unless we have an instant up front. He doesn't want to get up into that first place position in this group because he's going to get past on the last lap if McLeod gets a good run down into the chase. I think you're absolutely right. The front three continue to race in the same order. Well, the, the, the third, fourth, and fifth. Dam, Shiva, Iwa, and Fittis. They're well behaved until the last lap. The excitement is right here. And it's now a party of four. We just talked about how Wallace wants to wait. One person who doesn't want to wait. I think we hit it earlier. Uh, Philippe Calderon. He's going to be wanting to get around Patan as soon as possible. He'll have a lap and a half to do oh. it. He'll have... <laughs> Calderon gets right on the back of Baton. He'll have this straight to make some slingshot passes, then he'll have one more shot through Griffin, then he'll have this straight one more time. Assuming he doesn't make it on the twisty section, which would not surprise me. A two-second lead between Catchin and Hartley. I'll keep an eye on that one. Calderon, I think almost definitely he's got to make this pass around the 10 of Patan right here. Oh, who, I know who is. It's going to be Travis Wallace making a pass around McLeod in front of him. There we go. As we can, so there you can see the pass made. While this is going on, I can report the third, fourth, and fifth. Shira Iwa, Dam, and Fittis. That's going to heat up as well. So Wallace up to seventh. Let's go to third. 
We'll watch this one, because now this one's going to matter. We're going to jump you around a little bit here on this final lap, trying to cover all the action. So stay with us, viewers. This is Shira Iwa. Here comes Dam with the momentum. As they head down to Griffin Bend, Dam's going to make the move to the inside. He'll have the preferred position. The question will be, what will Fittis do? Fittis back there waiting. I don't know if the car has any straight line speed to get anything done. Under braking, Dam gets the pass made. Fittis looks, but that was very late of a look there for Fittis. He, there's just no way that was going to work. Let's jump back now. Assume they go up the hill in order. Let's jump back to Calderon. Calderon has a move on Baton. And he tries to get a toe on the back of McLeod. He can only get one. Wallace in seventh. McLeod in eighth. And you've got to imagine McLeod's trying to set up a move on Wallace right now while that's happening. Don't need to go there. Our leader working his way up the hill. Still two seconds ahead of Robert Hartley. Shira Iwa Fittis and, and uh, Shira Iwa Fittis. Wait a minute, what happened to... There, yes, he is, sorry. Shira Iwa Fittis. McLeod took a peek there. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I apologize. Dan out in front of Shira Iwa giving you that news. Okay, our leader now is working towards the chase. We don't need to go there yet. Let's go to third position. That's Dam out in front. Shira Iwa is well off the gap. Here comes Fittis gonna try to make a move. Oh, Shira Iwa Making. forces him over into the grass. Oh. Three wide heading to the chase. Our leader has just made his way through the chase. We can stay on this battle for a while. It'll resolve itself. These guys work down into the chase. We gotta go to the leader now. We'll come back for this one. Catch it now into Murray's corner. Let's give Sonny Catch the win, assuming he has enough fuel to get there. Hartley only one and a half seconds back, but the final round goes to Sonny Catch and Hartley gets second. Let's see Shira Iwa. He's gonna be first into Murray's. He's gonna hold off Finnis. Finnis with some momentum, but I think he's gonna run out of time. Shira Iwa, Finnis, and Dam. Let's go back to Wallace. Wallace holding down the fort right now. McLeod behind him, and Calderon is looking. Calderon really trying to get around McLeod, giving him a push. Look at the defensive the line. You got it, Nick. Calderon into the outside here, and McLeod stays on the inside. Calderon oh. into the grass, hits the wall. He's got to keep it going. I think he's going to hold on to the position. He is going to get overtaken there. Yeah, he got caught. He tried to make everything he had on on Wallace and Calder uh, and McLeod. Calderon will get ninth position. Paton gets tenth. Daniels will get thirteenth. He comes home just a little bit ahead of Paul Gibson. And we'll go to the last car on the lead lap. That would be uh, Hiroroni Kobayashi as he heads his way down into Murray. 16 cars on the lead lap. All things considered, can, can taking the track into account, a pretty clean race as Sonny Kanchin gets the win. The racing is over here in Australia, but our broadcast is far from done. We're gonna take a short break. We'll come back to run down the entire finishing order of the 23 drivers that took the grid, talk to some of them before we put a lock on the gate, not only for the final time uh, for at the racetrack, but for the final time this season, back in a few.
coming your way on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esport Network. You're watching our coverage of the Advanced Mazda Cup, the final round of the 2019 winter season. You know, if you haven't done so yet, you can be an i you can join the iRacing community and compete online against thousands of players in the world's most realistic racing simulations. The best of the best in the iRacing World Championship, as well as many private leagues like the one you're watching right now, are showcased right here on the iRacing Esport Network. GSRC is proud to be part of the IESN stable of broadcasters. With that out of the way, let's go give you our final rundown of the results here. After moving his biggest competition out of the way, Felipe Calderon, Sonny Ketchum was able to cruise home to the win, picking up his second this season. Ahead of our champion, Robert Hartley, who comes home ah, one and a half seconds behind the uh, behind Ketchum. Yatsua Shiriiwa was fast. He'll settle for third in a great battle with Gene Fittis and Mike Dam. Clifford Evan had a very quiet sixth position in between battles. Travis Wallace, Adam McLeod... Felipe Calderon goes 7th, 8th, and 9th, and David Baton rounds out the top 10. Nick? Cameron Bidwell, the Hoosier, coming with the 23 number, uh, the 23 ranked I rating of the 23 car field. He's going to have a great run, starting 10th, finishing in 11th. Behind him, Atsushi Maeda, going to finish 12th, and Ross Daniels behind them. He's going to be the last of the Australia New Zealand club drivers uh, represented in this race, finishing 13th. Paul Gibson, Matthew Roca in the 20 and the 21 cars, respectively. They're going to be rounding out the top 15, followed by Hironori Kobayashi, the last car on the lead lap. Some guys that ran into some trouble earlier, they're going to involve Jordy Pike, two laps down in 17th, Derek Holland, seven laps down in 18th, Andres Bertoni, nine laps down in 19th, and 10 laps down in 20th, Mitchell Peak, Justin Goulais, uh, Lucas Liarte, and Ivan L. Garcia are going to finish 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Okay, let's go ahead and get a chance to talk to some of the drivers. I'm going to get a chance to talk to a man who already had a win this season, had a pretty good run as we bring in Travis Wallace. Wallace was fast. He had a spin, then had to work his way back up through the field. Travis, ah, I guess seventh place. It was hard fought. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, uh, the spin was unfortunate, but all on me. <laughs> it was. There was no one around you, buddy. That was all on you. What happened? Uh, I just caught the curb that you don't want to catch there at murray's corner and uh it went right around dump the clutch and get back in it nevertheless it put you in a fun battle as you had some great racing going on um did you let me ask you a question we saw some people try to make pass they're they're in battles they can easily make the pass on either one of the straights but then they try to do it on the twisty section um can you think of a reason why did you did you make a pass on somebody going up or down the hill this race uh, I think I only passed two people on the straights. Okay. When I ended up back in 15th, I, I mean, even with it being a 45 minute race, the, the field's going to get spread out. The draft's going to get broken. I knew that I, f I was going to make up spots. I had to do it quick. So yeah, I, pl I passed several people going up, up and down the mountain. <laughs> that seventh place spot in on the grid, you had to think I'm close enough to be in the hunt here and stay with the guys, right? Oh yeah. Without a doubt. I, uh, I mean, I did a couple of races earlier in the week here uh, and realized, wow, I'm I'm not bad here. Uh, and then in the practice session right before the race started, uh, I was I was near the top of that. And I, I really thought I had a shot. So I was going to give it everything I had. Well, look, man, this is the last race that we're covering this season there. We're hearing that the works are underway to come back for another one. We hope to see you then. And if not, check out the GSRC schedule. Find a race, a series that we're broadcasting. It's been fun to get to know you and watch your race. Yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely be back for season two in this. I'm loving it. Uh, a big thank you to to Jordy Fight for getting all this set up, and a and a big thanks to y'all for uh, for covering this race. And it's been great to go back and watch. Congratulations on getting a win this season. We'll look forward to see what happens in the uh, what would it be the spring season coming up in 2009. Travis Wallace, your seventh place finisher here today. Nick, who you got? I have the man of the hour, Sonny Canchin, coming out of the Australia New Zealand Club and winning it at Bathurst tonight, Sonny. Second win of the season, along with uh, Okiyama, I believe it was. And uh, how'd you get it done tonight? Hi, Nicholas. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. Hey, Nick, Sean, and uh, Soup. 
uh, second uh, win. Uh, I'd have loved to make it to made it. Uh, would have loved to made it 12. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm happy about that. Uh, so all I can say is uh, that was a good race, and unfortunately, uh, Philippe was out of it uh, in the beginning. I uh, uh, had some issues there. Um, uh, with him going sideways every corner down the mountain. So uh, I wanted to actually get ahead of him. Unfortunately, the um, uh, network uh, uh, took its toll. Yeah, we uh, saw that earlier in the race. And another thing we saw in the race was you actually had the fastest pit stop, I believe, of anyone. Uh, and we were wondering, was fuel an issue for you in this race because of that? Uh, no, I had a brief uh, chat with my pit crew uh, before the race. And uh, uh, I'm, under, I'm not allowed to... <laughs> I don't have to disclose what what it was. I'm an NDA, <laughs> uh, but in, in which way, uh, it was it was good to be back uh, in for my pit crew. Uh, high fives all around uh, right now in the garage. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I was very com comfortable. Yes, sir. Uh, it's it's a sunny. It's Australia's a big country. How close are you to uh, to Bathurst? Uh, it's it's pretty much uh, not not too far. It's an hour's drive. It's about an hour's oh. drive. Closer than Phillip Island? Yeah, very close. Phillip Island is way down uh, south, uh, just outside Australia, just a bit uh, in its own island. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, but uh, but uh, I'm pretty much, I, I'm so excited right now. I want to drive up there. Straight <laughs> <soon>. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations on the win here today and good luck the rest of the way when we see you, wherever we see you next on GSRC. Hey, Sue, thank you so much, guys. Everyone at GSRC. Uh, one thing I want to say Thank you to Jody uh, for setting this all up and uh, and for, for this uh, edition and uh, first season in GSRC. It's such a pleasure uh, and uh, many more to come. Looking forward to it and also looking forward to tomorrow's race. I'm pumped. I can't wait. I need a win. Got it. And of course, Sonny talking about the MX-5 World Tour that will be here on GSRC and IESN coming your way tomorrow. Our final interview now, we're going to head and talk to the sheriff. He didn't have a great day, but let's go ahead. Sheriff. Jody, let's let's throw away today's race. Let's talk about uh, your thoughts on how the season went. I, I thought it was pretty darn entertaining broadcast. Yeah, that's really what I'm here to do. You know, uh, apologies to Derek Holland for getting the clutch and the brake mixed up. So once I got hit, then I drug Derek into my mess. Uh, and Derek is going to be he's going to be a big part of next season happening. Derek is uh, ponied up a bunch to make sure that next summer next season happens. And in fact, Super going to have to. We have a Queen of the Ball award that we're going to ask you to give out because Derek's uh, grandmother's or mother's Queenie is her nickname. Oh! And so, in Queenie's honor, we're going to have a Queen of the Ball award next each race next season that you're going to pick out as just somebody that uh, either had great race craft or came to the crowd or for whatever reason you thought helped make the broadcast uh, enjoyable to watch. And I'm going to leave that in your hands. I, I am. I am smiling ear to ear. I love it when guys give me that responsibility. Queen of the ball could not be better spot to award. Hey, congratulations. I know you're going to be busy next season. We're not going to probably see as much of you coming up in the spring season. Right? Yeah, I've got a couple things going on. I should make probably two-thirds of the races and then may even look to have somebody else handle this in the summertime when I work uh, seven days a week in the summer. Um, but it's you know my, I like to get things going, and that's what. I'm, and now I'll probably look to try and hand this off to somebody if possible to find something else to get going. But if, you know, if it wasn't if it wasn't for Trip Smith and Dries Nice, Derek, uh, Frank Rico, you guys doing what you do. I mean, the fact that this is even available to us as an option to be able to broadcast our races is spectacular, and that iRacing Esports Channel picked us up to help us get the exposure for this thing has really made it a lot of fun. I'll get you out of here on this one. You talked about exposure. How has attendance been? It's, uh, uh, it's brought a lot of attention and, and more participation to the to the series, correct? Well, I th really think uh, it's a good sell to iRacing right now that in their marketing budget, if they were to put a season's race like this, it's money well spent because um, total unique drivers participating in the in the 12-week series was up 50%, and total number of starts across the board in all tracks during the 12 weeks was uh, up 50% as well. So it really looks like it did. It, re, it, it was a good shot of adrenaline in the arm of the series. There you go. Preaching to the choir, baby. Hey, congratulations on doing what you did. Sorry about your performance today. We'll look forward to seeing you down the road. You going to race tomorrow? MX5? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a uh, uh, yesterday was a practice for this one, and this one's a practice for MW. <laughs> uh, I'll be there tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. I, I got I got to get one good one in. Although I will say our friend Richard Losper was there last night, and that was a lot, a lot of fun racing with Richard. Oh, let's give a shout out to my old broadcast partner, Richard. Glad to see that you're still around doing what you do. All right, Jordy, we'll see you down the road. Thanks, guys.
Jordy Fike, the the sheriff, the man who runs the show here in the Advanced Mazda Cup. All right, and you know, we were talking a lot about tomorrow's race. That's the MX-5 World Tour. Same track, same cars, and much of the same drivers. You don't want to miss that one. Let's go ahead and thank everybody that makes this possible. And, of course, we'll start with everybody who is in the uh, Advanced Mazda Cup community. You heard Jordy talk about who they are. Uh, they support this broadcast and it makes it possible. Now, how about the good guys at Recotech as well for sponsoring? On screen now are just some of the equipment and software used to swing cyberspace into your place. The original music that lets your ears alert your eyes. You've been watching GSRC. Well, that comes courtesy of Eric Eckholm and June Milan. See the screen to how to contact each of them. Now, this concludes GSRC's coverage of the Advanced Monster Cup, but you heard the sheriff talking there. We expect to be back for next season. If you want to know where, you can check in on our webpage. We'll talk more about that later. How about this, though? Next up for IESN. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be something. It's round three. It's the international region of the majors. That's going to be later tonight or tomorrow, depending on your part on the globe. The official starting time for that is 1.45 a.m., Eastern Time. That's going to be Saturday, March 2nd. If you're confused, that's about four or five hours from now. You'll figure it out. Sliding across your screen right now are just some of the upcoming broadcasts, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. Now, here's the deal. If you want to know when this series is going to come back, this is what you do. Go to GSRC and they'll tell you. It's GlobalSimRacingChannel.com or you can find us on Twitter, GSR Channel, Facebook at GlobalSimRacingChannel or Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. And my gosh, if you haven't done so yet, what are you waiting for? Head on over to our YouTube page and hit that big red button and become a YouTube subscriber. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, and that would be Nick, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank you all for watching as Sonny Kenshin wins here in round number 12. And we didn't give enough attention to Robert Hartley, who wins the initial championship here in the Advanced Monster Cup. Congratulations to Robert. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.